Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the garage review for the Swedish tier 9 heavy tank, the STRVK. Now this is a tank that you can currently get with the Action Heroes Season Pass or you can just buy it outright for like 17,000 gold. I don't like this tank very much. I just think it's a one trick pony and even then it's got a lot of weaknesses that don't just just make it a bit uninteresting. I think the one thing is it's an uninteresting tank, and the one trick it's got is it's kind of it's just kind of a bit meh at it to be honest. And it's basically got the playstyle of a Centurion, but it's just worse than a Centurion. So let's get into the stats. Two hundred and forty nine APCR penetration. That's very good. Again, you can pen most things with two hundred and forty nine pen on the APCR. It's a little bit lower than a lot of other guns, which should pack in more like 258, 260, but it's similar to an AMX 30 in that way. 298 APCR premium pen is, again, enough to pen pretty much every tank that you'll ever meet, which is great. And it also has the ability on its APCR rounds, and I'll, I'll stay this as well. The 1,000 meters a second shell velocity that you get on the standard APCR is terrible. And it makes the gun handling feel worse than it actually is. And it's kind of annoying for that. But then if you press A, and you get the premium APCR with 298 pen, it's got 1,523 meters a second shell velocity, which is absolutely amazing. Which is kind of annoying that it's that much quicker than the standard round. I mean, I'll always say it for premium rounds and standard rounds. If you're going to give a premium round more pen and it's the same shell type like APCR, the standard round APCR should be the one with the 15 meters, 1500 meters a second shell velocity, and the premium round is the one that gets slower. But that's just me. That's the way I'd balance it. But they obviously think it's differently in that way. So yeah, you get 1500 meters a second on the shell velocity, which is fantastic on the premium rounds. So yeah, keep that in mind. 390 alpha damage, standard for the tier, it's very nice. 1850 hit points for a heavy tank, again it's around about that for most heavy tanks at the tier. It means you can take a fair whack and deal it out, it gives you time to deal it out as well. 40 kilometers an hour top speed, now this is where it starts to get a little bit meh, because that's not that great, especially for the playstyle of the tank. 40 kilometers an hour top speed is just a little bit slow to be honest. It holds it back a lot because it can't take those aggressive hull down positions as easily as you could say in a Centurion, which obviously gets 10 kilometers an hour top speed more and better horsepower per ton as well. So that holds it back, and like I say, it just makes the tank feel just mediocre generally and just worse, a lot worse than a lot of other tanks it'll ever face. 400 meters view range, which is fantastic, it means you can pump it up without the view range to like closer to that 445 spotting cap. And if you don't know what I mean by 445 spotting cap, you can, own, you can only spot tanks up to 445 meters, but any view range over 445 meters then boosts your ability to spot tanks through their concealment. So makes it easier to spot those pesky light tanks that are really stealthy anyway, so the closer you get to like 500. Still concealment of 0.11. Now that's actually quite stealthy for a heavy tank, but at the same time you shouldn't really be relying on stealth in a heavy tank, so... It's not that effective, and you wouldn't really use any many crew skills to buff that up. So here we go, 5.7 rounds of minute rate of fire, that's 11.6 base reload. Now I think you can get that down to about 8.8 .8 seconds reload, which is not too bad, but at the same time that's still worse than a Centurion 1, which is one of the slowest firing medium tanks at tier 9, and... Yeah, for 390 Alpha, that that reload isn't that nice. And, yeah, it just means, again, it adds to the fact that you do what the Centurion 171 does, but worse. Although, the aim time at 1.8 is definitely better than the Centurion 71, which has 2.3 aim time. And 1.8 second aim time is fantastic. Although, when I've been playing it, it doesn't feel like 1.8. It feels a lot worse. It feels like you do spend a lot longer aiming than some other tanks that have got two second aim times and stuff like that. I think it's, there might be something to do with the terrain resistances being poor as well, which just means that... And the other statistics that you don't see, where when you try, you know, turning the, tongue, turning the tank and turning the turret and stuff like that really affects the bloom of the gun. But yeah, it really does feel worse than 1.8 seconds. Accuracy at 0.33 is also very, very good, 
But the sh like I say, the shell velocity with the thousand meters a second when you're firing at range, sometimes that accuracy just doesn't feel right. You do miss shots, even in this day and age. If you miss shots and you sit there going, "How did that miss? Really? Oh, okay." So ten degrees of gun depression, fantastic. It means you can get hull down and use the flexibility of the tank very well, as well as the fact that you've got a decent turret with two hundred and fifty-four millimeters of turret armor as well. It's great, but it does have a few areas of weakness on this tank, which, again, makes it worse than a Centurion 1, and we'll show that in a second. 38 degrees a second on the traverse speed of the turret. That's that's really good. It means you will not get out-traversed by light tanks very easily in keeping up with them. The range we've gone over. 670 horsepower with 16 horsepower per ton, or 16.37 horsepower per ton. Again, it's not the, it's not the slowest... That is not the slowest it could be, right? But it, you do feel not that quick. And like I say, you really do struggle with that 40 kilometers an hour to top speed to take the positions you want to take to be hauled down to feel powerful in this tank. 18 kilometers an hour back, backwards speed, that's fantastic. Like I say, I always say it, once you're going over 15 kilometers an hour to reverse speed, that's really good. Track traverse at 36 degrees a second is nice again you don't you don't turn like a slug so that's okay and signal range yeah who cares so that's the stats of the str vk let's have a look at the armor profile now the armor profile of this tank it is an amil hurrit amil hull i should say so it's not very good it's it's pretty much swiss cheese like 200 mil on the upper plate it's easily penned by most the lower plate is not very good so you don't never want to rely on the hull armor of this tank it's just not very good what is good about this tank is the turret but there is issues with said turret if you're on level ground or slightly downward this becomes a big pen for people if they shoot the forehead of this tank they'll pen it and that i i irritating the amount of times it happens you're like oh, i'm hauled down or you know i'm on level playing field my turret's really good and then they just hit you they fire on the move and they're probably aiming for this but they actually hit up here and they pen here and you're like what's the point of having a good turret when you know you've got tier 9s and 10s just penning you for fun in the top of the turret capola can be penned as well and i say if they're slightly above you they'll pen that so often it's ridiculous because there'll be some places where you've got good gun depression, but as soon as you come down and go into a dip, they'll just clip the top of your turret and pen it. As well as that, the turret cheeks are frustrating. Now, they're small targets, but if tanks are firing premium at tier 9 and 10, and even standard rounds for some tanks, they'll pen, the gu they'll pen right next to this gun mantlet. And that is so very frustrating when it happens, because it's just like they're, they're clearly just shooting at your turret, but they just pen it anyway. And sometimes the gun mantlet as well when they're firing premium, but for the most part, that's okay. It's these turret cheeks is where they really do pen it, and it's, it's just very, very frustrating. But when you're using the gun depression, it can, it can still be good. Like, they've, they've just got to hit the right spot. But there is another irritating thing that I've noticed a couple of times now as well. That's not a thing on the Centurion, but it's where it joins to the hull on the Emil hull. And that is this turret ring is penable. And if you manage to sit still enough on a ridge line, or if they manage to catch this randomly, it'll just get penned. And um, that's why it's just worse than a Centurion One, because it does the same. It has the same playstyle. It tries to do the same thing as the Centurion One, which is get hauled down and use the sniper of a gun. But it just doesn't do it as effectively as a Centurion One. So this this thing really isn't worth the gold, if I'm totally honest. If it was a free-to-earn tank, then it'd be like, well, I mean, you're getting a very mediocre tank, but at the same time, it's, it's free. But this tank, to buy, don't don't buy it. I wouldn't buy it, to be perfectly honest. It's not it's not that great. It's not very interesting. And you've got the same playstyle in the tank that does it better in the Centurion one that you can earn for free by grinding. So, as always, I'm going to send you over to the garage bit, and I'm going to show you the crew loadout for the tank, which is probably going to be a fairly standard heavy tank and yeah so i'll see you there so here we are in the garage with the str vk right let's have a look at how i equip the tank so 
I do equip vertical stabilizers on this tank. Now, with the accuracy, you don't really have to, but I just kept missing shots, and I just sat there going, how did that miss? I was getting so frustrated with the fact that the shots were just missing that I decided, you know what, screw the vents. I'm going to put vert stabs on this. Now, vents are very useful for this tank because of the DPM and the reload being pretty poor. So... You could run vents quite easily and drop the vert stabs, but I, like I said, I was getting irritated. So I run rammer, vents, and optics. Rammer, vents, and optics? Rammer, vert stabs, and optics. Good lord. Yeah, so rammer, vert stabs, and optics is what I run. But like I say, you could quite easily drop the vert stabs just because of how accurate the tank is and run optics and vents together. So. With the setup I've got, I've got the accuracy of the tank down to 0.24, which is f filthily accurate, uh, as is most tanks at 6.0. Let's have a look at the commander skills. And for the commander, I run a very, very typical heavy tank build for me. And that is Brothers in Arms, Rapid Loading, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Firefighting, Track Mechanic, Steady Aim, Snapshot, and Run and Gun. Now, like I said, this is a, this is a very typical setup for me for heavy tanks because you can buff the aim up. That is as much as you can there. Then you've got the ability to make your view range as good as possible because, again, I'm being aggressive in my heavy tanks. I don't want to get out of spotted, so I'd always have the view range perk. Fire fighting again, because just if it gets annoyingly get a set on fire, it puts it out quicker. I'd rather that than just sit there burning for longer. Track mechanic, because you don't want to get tracked and stuck in one place for too long. You don't want to get perma-tracked and then farmed to death. It's never a joyous experience, so that prevents that. Sixth sense, because you don't always want to know when you're spotted. Rapid loading, because well, making, you, making your DPM 10% better is always, always great. And born leader, because you want to make your performance 10 percent better because that's just it's just better to do that generally you could drop firefighting if you run fire extinguishers quite easily and run something like iron mace for because both rounds are apcr so having that will help the pen drop off over distance so that's a very useful skill for this tank if you want to drop the firefighting also, Gunsmith could be good for this tank too, because of the fact that you do need to be playing this tank and trying to keep it hull down, hide the hull and have the turret open. People are going to be shooting the turret, they might, well, they probably will shoot you and damage your gun. So, Gunsmith will be probably quite good as well for this tank, because if you shoot and break your gun, then you're going to be still 30% more accurate with that gun being damaged. So, that's a skill that is well worthy. Rapid aim, maybe, that might be one, but I think you'd take Gunsmith over rapid aim in terms of replacing that firefighting skill. Is there anything else you'd replace it with? Not really for a heavy tank. Maybe if you really wanted to take off armor angling, possibly, that might be one. Or just put general mechanic on and definitely increase everything that will get fixed. But yeah, that's that's my crew loadout for this tank. That's what I can get it effectively down to in terms of the gun performance. Like I say, it's a tank that I'm just I'm not a fan of, generally. It just feels like a worse version of a Centurion, and it's not really that it's not really worth the gold, to be perfectly honest. So, as always, I'm gonna let you see the gameplay of the tank, make your own mind up. You might see it and go, this guy's a Muppet, he's talking a load of rubbish. Watching this gameplay, I kind of like the looks of this tank, so I might buy it. So I'll let you decide and I'll show you the gameplay, so I'll see you there. So here's the gameplay, and we're on Himmelsdorf, which for the SDRVK is possibly not the best map in the universe, and that's because, well, it wants to get hauled down, and there's not really many places you can do that in the SCRV. You, well, I mean, you can go to the hill, which is what we're doing right now, and that's pretty much the only place you can really go on Himmelsdorf to like use the tank effectively. Now, there's one thing I didn't cover in the armour viewer. And that is the tank does have 70 millimeters of side armor, which means it can side scrape. But it's not something you should really be attempting in the tank. It can do it, which is good. It means you're not going to like try it and get overmatched. But at the same time, it's very, very easy to overangle it, and it doesn't take much for it to get penned when you would do overangle it that slightest, littlest bit. 
and as well as that the upper plate is so big and just the way it angles itself that it, when you're poking that around the corner it can get caught quite easily just next to the turret basically and that is a, that is a big problem when you're trying to side scrape in this tank so it's not one that's built for it, it's not the greatest for it. What this tank wants to be doing is getting hauled down. So we're on the way up the hill and we're, we, you know, we're doing a steady tw 20 kilometers an hour, 19 kilometers an hour up this hill, which is, you know, it's not too bad, actually, to be honest, for a heavy tank. And we're getting to this position here on top, and this is great. So we're gonna auto aim a shot into the 907. And well, I should have aimed because the 907 is quite good frontally armored and well what we're waving into his upper plate is never going to go well so we get a nice shot into his side we're going to poke round we're going to finish him off and there goes the 907 we're going to stay hull down as well for this 257 so that we can use our turret here we nicely bounce around from him and we hit the floor unfortunately and i'm watching these guys that are poking because there's a chieftain as well as God, well, it was a camp under it got shut down. And we're, again, we're just trying to poke because that 257 there is stock. You can tell because it just looks like an IS3 turret. So, what I was aiming for there was the hatch on top of the 257 because you can pan the, you can overmatch the hatch of the 257. It's only 30 millimeters of armor. That's if it has the stock IS3 turret because it's exactly the same as the IS3 turret. So, we also got a nice shot into his upper plate that was unangled. And the shot before that, we just missing. We like shot straight at his gun, which was never going to work. But yeah, we're, we're trying to work this guy over. He's now like one of the only ones left. Unfortunately, we shot his tracks instead of his lower plate. But we do track him in place and we do get the assistance. Now, there's just one heavy tank left on top of the hill and he's dead. And we've won this hill. Now, I'm kind of going over here to see if I can get a shot into the T-54 E1. But... I've noticed down below we are losing heavily, so it's like, okay, you know what, I'm going to go down and I'm going to try and help down there. Because, so, I mean, currently we've only done about 1163 damage, which is not very good. And I want to try and push my damage up more than I have. And talk about gun handling, <laughs> on the move, RBRT, slam the shot straight in, like 400 meters, just through that gap. Like, okay, sure. 1500 damage now and it's like okay i want to go down there and i'm like i see where that td is going and it's like okay i don't even know what the td is but i'm like okay i'm gonna go intercept this guy before he gets round and then i was thinking actually i'm not gonna drive in front of him i'm gonna stop around this corner and wait in ambush because he has no idea i'm here but of course he's already looking and aiming this way i don't know what gave him that sense that we were here because I hadn't been spotted for a long time. And I don't think... Oh, I don't know. Unless that heavy had been. I don't know. Now, we take a stupid shot from the 268 V5 there. And I'm kind of like hoping that the 75 will come and help. Because right then and there, I was slightly irritated with him. Because I took the hit from the 268 V5. And then I penned him. But the E75, instead of pulling forward and shooting the V5, then just went and hid around the corner. And I was kind of hoping that he'd have come and helped and shot the guy because he only needed another shot to kill him and unfortunately he didn't do it but then he, he got shut down anyway so it was all, all well and good so i'm going to charge down the banana road to see if i can find anything hiding down here once trying to intercept that guy that's going up onto the hill or into the area up onto the hill anyway and we then we spot this fv 4005 and it's like this is the perfect time get that he in and slaps it in 450 if we hadn't loaded the he round we would never have killed that guy so it was very nice to do and now he's gone i'm looking at this area we're in and going hmm the two guys charging the hill are a concern but those that are charging my heavy tank in our base are also a big concern i want to go try and help this heavy tank and basically secure his health so there's an ST1 over here next. To the, it's the Concept 1B. And I'm like, I'm coming, Concept. I'm coming. Get another shot into his side. Activate the food so that we've got the best DPM we can possibly have. And it's like, right, let's get rid of this guy. It just goes to the left of the aim. It wasn't the best aim in the world, but it just goes to the left and only tracks him, which is so unfortunate. Then we low roll. 
which is also very unfortunate. And we're just going to try and side scrape this guy. Like I say, the tank can do it. It's got 70 millimeters of side armor. Fortunately enough, he doesn't shoot at us. So we shut him down. And now we've got friends with us now. And it's like, okay, we've got a medium at the end where this mouse is. We've also got another medium. I try and pop a shot at the mouse on the move. But there's actually two dead wrecks there, which unfortunately absorbs the shell. And I'm just going to side scrape this mouse. And then I get shot in the butt because there's actually a heavy tank behind me. Out of nowhere, he just comes up and shoots in the butt, which is never good. So I'm going to just run away from him. And I'm going to get around this dead wreck and try and pressure this mouse. And unfortunately, we don't hit the lower plate of the mouse. We actually hit the tracks and only track him. We fortunately bounce the mouse on our turret, which is nice. Get around to his side and pop another shot in. Now, this guy is a one-shot for us now unfortunately the leopard missed which is not ideal but the leopard shuts him down now unfortunately we pulled the trigger as well and we fired the shell after the mouse had died so we're unfortunate with that but it's fine because no one else can shoot us right now so we're going to go help this medium tank up in front of us which is facing a full health vk and in fact this progetto seems to be afk I have no idea what had happened to that Progetto, but then I'm, I've, I've shot the VK once, and I'm now stuck in the situation where it's like, okay, I'm doomed. So we pop a nice shot into the lower plate of the VK, and it's like, okay, he shot someone else. I'm going to try and get away, but I can't. That, that wreck was blocking my only escape there, and unfortunately I got shut down by the enemy E75. So that was a nice game for the STRV in... Not comfortable circumstances for it. We got 4.8k damage, 641 assisted, 1090 XP in a loss, which is not that bad. And we're on to the next game, which is on Countess. Now this is more, this is a map that's more like it for the tank. There's a lot more places that I can get hull down, hide my turret, and make the use of like ridge lines and stuff like that, where I can hide my turret and hide my hull, but, well not hide my turret, hide my hull and use this gun performance because obviously the gun with the great accuracy that it has is, is definitely a sniper and with the range you can get on maps like Countess and that it's definitely very good for that those sorts of engagements, this is not a brawling heavy like that wants to be brawling in the streets of Himmelsdorf this is definitely a tank that wants to be hauled down on ridges on Countess Mali, Proc, you know the, the likes of hilly maps so what we're going to do is, because it's the alternate spawns, or it's, actually, it's, I said the alternate spawns, this is Assault. So we're going to push out the town on this left-hand side of the map and push up to this little area over here. Because this is quite good for getting shots towards the enemy base and the northern side. You can catch people crossing. But we did get spotted by this T-92 light tank, so I just thought we aimed a shot and fired at him. Pretty confident in the gun handling, and that was okay. Now we do snap a shot at the Conqueror and unfortunately hit his turret and bounce. Or No, actually I think we tracked him, which is unfortunate, but it wasn't fully aimed, so it was not, never always going to pen there. And we push across and we see what this is. It's an STB-1, so we pop up an auto-aim shot. I was aiming for his tracks, but we only, well, we didn't track him. We only penned him for 329. And we're going to poke around this corner to see if we can get another shot at him. Hopefully a poke, but then there's this T-92, which... Yeah, absolutely eviscerated by something from behind me. And we get a nice shot into the side of the STB-1. Luckily enough for us, because of this little ridge line in front of us, he's a little bit awkward for him to pen us. And he only tracked us. He pens us that time. His friend pokes over at a really awkward angle. And we get a nice shot into his lower plate. And this is kind of awkward because these tanks that we're facing are easy to pen, but will out DPM us so badly like, they will fire two shots for... Well, they'll fire two shots most of the time for my one into them. So these are two deadly tanks that I don't want to be facing off against. Now, I get lazy here, and I try and auto-aim a shot into the STB. And somehow we miss that one. I mean, if I'd, if I'd actually aimed properly, I definitely would have killed him. But I, I'm not too sure. We'd, I mean, even we, we overexposed ourselves there, and we still somehow didn't pen him. Now, this other STB YOLOs us. Fortunately enough for me, misses. But I'm still reloading, so we're not actually going to get a shot into him. Artillery takes a swing at us, leaves us on 100 hit points, which is not ideal. We bounce something from over there, which breaks our turret and our gun. Fortunately enough, though, we actually hit them, but only bounced. 
And then again, fortunately enough, the side armor helping us there just with the angling, the fact that that STB hit us in the tracks, he didn't pan us, he only tracked us. So again, we got fairly fortunate there as well. And we're on very low health after that engagement, which is not the best. But, you know, we came out of that quite well. The armor on the turret and stuff like that and them snapping shots proved itself to be pretty reliable at points. Although, when we did get hit in the turret from whatever it was over there, they did also break our gun on our turret, which was unhelpful, but yeah. So, there's an IS-7 in front of us on th this rock. Now, this is something that is not what I want to be facing. I don't want to be going over there. I just, I, I've got to play, because of my health, I have to play passive right, right now, you know, right now. So... This is going to be a very passive section of gameplay because I'm just limited to what I can do, pretty much, because of the amount of health I'm on. So I've got to play it safe, stay hull down. Fortunately enough for us, the artillery doesn't manage to get us. And we're going to try some pixel shots at this Conqueror's Capola. You know, the gun is incredibly accurate, so we're hoping to hit these shots. And I was kind of hoping he'd poke, but he didn't. Um, we're just looking for that shot on his Capola. Unfortunately enough, it flies right in for 348. And we're just going to pull back and reload and try and hug the rock a little bit to hope that artillery doesn't swing another shot in and try and finish us off. And it's all, it is all a waiting game at this point because we can't push aggressively to attack these guys because... It's a fine line we're treading. Only 100 hit points. Artillery could quite easily slay us as well, which is not good. So we're just waiting on an enemy mistake and waiting on them getting impatient. But the problem is as well, and it is playing on my mind a little bit, in the fact that this is assault. So the longer we wait, the longer we wait to lose. Because even if we survive, and even the team survives, and even if we have more tanks alive than the enemy team, we will still lose. Because it's salt, and you have to capture the base to win or eliminate the entire enemy team. So, yeah. We are still aiming for shots at that Capola, and we hit it. Juicy accuracy is what this is. It's absolutely beautiful when you can snipe shots like that over ridge lines. Cause the shots we've had on that Capola of that guy is very, very <laughs> slim. And it's nice to be able to hit those shots. My biggest problem with this gun isn't the fact that it hits those slight shots like that on the Conqueror. It's the fact that I've had it quite a few times where I've been aiming at the broad side of tanks and it just flies off and hits the lower end and doesn't do any damage. And it's quite frustrating when it does that. So we try and pop a shot. We try and anticipate where that artillery was going to pop out. Unfortunately, we missed. I could have actually aimed a bit further along on that building and probably been able to hit the artillery. But, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get a nice shot into him. I'm trying to tell this E5 to fall back because I don't want him to get yolo by the IS-7. Uh, again, like I said, I'm trying to play a little bit more careful because of just my hit point situation. I wanted him to pull back around the corner so that the IS-7 would have to overexpose and shoot the E5 by pulling around the corner and therefore we could both shoot him. But unfortunately he doesn't do that. So I'm going to pop around this corner, pop a shot into the Concept 1B's upper plate and then I realise actually just how awkward this position is because there's a tank over there on our right now that could quite easily finish us. I'm waiting for this reload, I'm trying to pop a shot into the lower plate, the I-7, and this whole situation has got awkward now, especially with me only tracking the I-7. He's attacking us. Then he realises his mistake. He was like, oh, wait, how quick does this thing reload? Well, you hesitated. You probably could have had me, and I finish you off. So we're going to wait for the reload. We're going to poke to try and finish off this SDRVK. Unfortunately for us, he does get finished off, so the auto-aim shot misses. And then we've got a shot at this E5. Again, I'm hauled down, so I'm quite confident in the ability of the tank. We get a nice shot into the side of that E5. And I'm just watching that Type 59-2 that is on our left now. Because, again, he's quite a good hull down. And from that position, he could probably just about get a shot at my upper plate. Which he could probably pen if he's firing premium. And even so, he might even get a shot at my lower plate. But he is a one shot, so he's also playing it careful. So, while that E5 is now focusing on the Type 59, I'm like, okay, I'm going to poke around here and I'm going to try and get another shot. So, we get a nice shot through the, I think it was the upper plate of the E5 as it came down. So, it's actually lower... And we're going to load a premium round now because that T95 Scopolic can be a pain in the ass. 
So we get the premium round in. We aim for the Coppola. We shut it down. Now the E5 is YOLOing in, which is not good. I'm watching my ass for the Type 59-2. Um, fortunately enough, the TDs that are covering our ass manage to shut down the E5 and we stay safe. So now there's just the artillery and an object 268 V5 somewhere. And I'm like, right, okay. So the 268 V5 is probably over there. And we get shut down by artillery. So there's no more game for us anymore. There's just the artillery and the TD left. And that was the end of the game for us. So unfortunately, artillery shut us down in the end. And we couldn't get any more damage out. But we finished that game with three kills, 4.9k damage, ace tanker, high caliber. And a, a generally a nice game for the SDR VK. We had a nice helping of luck in that game but at the same time we used the tank to the best of its ability on ridge lines and stuff to stay safe and we managed to get away with it so yeah a tank that's probably not worth the gold i probably i couldn't recommend buying it it's just a, it's a pretty mere tank to be honest so as always everybody thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time